Hey friends, I wanted to swing by today and show you a fun recycled art project that my daughter and I have been working on and give you some instructions because you might enjoy making it. So we decided this week we're going to work on some ocean animals and we grabbed those toilet paper tubes and we've been working on creating some sharks and some happy fish and some seahorses and I want to show you how to do it. All right. So let's make a shark. Sometimes I want to kind of squish them a little bit. Um, I don't need to fold them perfectly in half, but I want to squish them just enough. And I'm going to take my scissors and cut open his mouth. And whoop, got some scraps to put off to the side here. Shark has some mouth. Now you could take some glue and some white paper and make teeth. That is so much fun, and the bigger kids love to do that. On my piece of cardboard, it's white on one side and brown on the other. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to create his tail and some fins. So what I want to do is when I flatten him, his tail is going to start in here and get wide and then come in like that. You see how I measured it? And then when I scoot it back, draw just a little bit more tail so I can put it on the inside and now I know where to cut okay I'm also going to draw his top fin that comes up in the air in shark fin fashion kind of like that again I may want to create a little tab at the bottom because I'll fold that over to help glue it okay then I'm going to draw the bottom fin bottom fin is usually a little bit smaller notice how they both kind of lean towards the back of the fish again i'm going to put a little tab on here so that i know where i'm cutting then i just take my scissors and cut my fins i actually used hot glue on mine to hold all the pieces on so i could get done a little bit faster and not lose my mind but you use whatever glue you have on hand to help it work. You could also, well, I don't know if you could staple the fins. The fins aren't going to staple too well, okay? Notice how I cut the tab and the fin and left them together. That's going to be really important as you are working. So let's get our bottom fin and trim around. Again, leave the tab on. Okay, leave my scraps up here and let's go ahead and get our tail. I am not going to show you how to make shark teeth because I assume that you all know how to cut some zigzag lines on white paper and then use your imagination to glue the shark's teeth in place in his or her mouth. Isn't it funny how we kind of think of sharks as being boys, but there, there have to be boy and girl sharks, don't there? So, my tail is ready. Make sure my glue is open. Kick off that little bit of dried glue on the end, help it work a little better. Oh, I like to listen to the glue. Can you hear it? That helps me know that it's open. I call that breathing. So, I'm going to put a little glue on the top of the the tail and a little glue on the bottom of the tail. So you want to glue front and back. And when you come back to your cardboard tube, you slide that in and you pinch it shut. <clears throat> I usually hold it and in my brain I count to about 30 seconds um, just so that I know it's going to stick pretty well. With liquid glue like this, you might have to wait more than 30 seconds because you're actually teaching the cardboard tube a new shape to remember. Okay, I just let it rest and hold it and keep holding it. Oh, it looks like, oh, no, just popped open. Gotta keep holding it some more. Now, to fold my fin, I have this line here and I want to fold it. So sometimes I can fold it just with my fingers. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to glue it and then we're going to add some paint to it. Now remember, you want the fin to point towards his tail. See that? 
and his mouth. So it points away from his mouth. Okay, so I folded it really well. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the bottom of his fin. And this goes on the top of his body. Okay, again, if you have hot glue, this is a great time to use hot glue. If you have liquid glue like me, we're just gonna have to be patient and hold it and hold it and hold it. But we can do that. Maybe you could sing a song that you enjoy singing while you're holding it. And that could be really fun. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my bottom fin. I'm gonna fold it on that line. I'm gonna put some glue on it. And remember the fin points to the back of the fish. Okay. Put it on and hold it in place. Whew. My fins are having trouble today. And you count and wait. Now, I went through my very happy Google Eye collection and I found some Google Eyes that I thought worked with a shark. You decide, oh look, wouldn't that be a fun mommy shark with that pink eye like that? Oh, that would be so silly. I wonder if I have a match. So, you find whatever Google Eyes you think match your shark best. Maybe I'm just going to go with the old classics. Let's see here. And then, after your shark has his or her Google Eyes, you're ready to paint Mr. Shark or Miss Shark, depending on who you are making today. Now, I love this set of paints. I picked it up at Michael's Arts and Crafts. It is done by their name brand, Artist Loft. And these are watercolor paints, but they show up on cardboard so well. I cannot get over it. Now, my paints are a little dirty. My daughter had a lot of fun yesterday painting her shark, but they do clean up pretty fast too. So they get better the more you use them. Okay, so let's get a little more water on there. Oh, Mr. Shark's starting to turn green. He might've spent a little bit too much time in the dirty part of the ocean. He's got some algae growing on him. I do have some gray paint, which is fun to add on. And I can keep working and painting Mr. Shark. Let's make a happy baby fish. Again, I'm gonna kind of smush it a little bit flat so that I have, I know exactly what I'm working with. Ooh, that end pulling up here. I think that's gonna trim off and be the tail. So on the tail side on baby fish, I usually cut a little triangle to make the tail a little more narrow. Okay, so that's gonna be where the tail joins. Up here, we're gonna make baby fish have a happy mouth. So, Happy. Again, it's kind of like a triangle shape. You see how I've got a little bit of mouth. Now, I don't like to make teeth on baby fish because he's supposed to be friendly, almost like rainbow fish. Okay. So I'm going to draw my tail again. I kind of smush it flat. I like baby fish to have a very fancy tail. Now, remember, I cut some triangles off here. So I'm gonna make my tail a little more narrow at the end. Ooh, and it's super fancy. Okay, when I scoot the fish away, I need to add a little bit extra so it can go inside the fish, okay? Same up here, I'm gonna draw a fin. I love having beautiful fins. I think I like to channel a betta fish. Um, those bright colored fish. And then I come to the bottom and let's do a bottom fin. And again, put the tabs on so you have something to glue with. And here we go. Let's cut them out. You know, if your fin looks different than my fin, that is totally fine. Because I really, I'm making up my fin. And fins on fish are similar to fingerprints on humans. They're not the same. Every fin and fingerprint is going to be different because it's a different fish. That's how things are in nature, and I love it that way. All right, we got a, wait, was that the top? I'm so confused now. Top fin, face, I start building it together here so I know what I'm doing. I can't lose my pieces. Keep cutting. 
Cutting on cardboard can be tricky because it's a little bit harder than paper. So sometimes I'll cut my scraps like that, cut them off and then set them out of the way. Um, sometimes you cut yourself into a corner where like the scissors get stuck. You know what I mean? Have you ever had your scissors get stuck in something? And if that happens, I usually just try to take the scissors out and start again from a new angle. So my scissors, chances are, are going to get stuck. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cut off right there. Then I'm going to come and cut this curve. Made it a little bit easier to cut that way. Got a scrap cut off. And I'm going to cut around. And if it gets stuck, see how I cut some of it off? That makes it easier to work with cardboard and scissors. You just kind of cut it in small sections like that. So you'll have some a lot of little bitty scraps left over, but it'll be a lot easier to cut. And yeah, so chop little tiny bits and pieces. And I think my fish's tail is kind of cut. Let's get these scraps out of the way. See you later, scraps. This is similar to the shark, so I'm going to grab my tail and I'm going to put some glue on the top and the bottom. I'm going to stick it inside Mr. Fish and squeeze him shut. Okay, again, I want to hold it shut for maybe 30 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer. Okay, let's say we're ready to glue our bottom fin. I need to fold that tab. I need to put my glue on and hold that tab in place. There we go. Stay. Now I have another tab. Let's see if we can fold this one the opposite way just to make it a little more. Oh, that one doesn't want to work, does it? He's having a hard time folding. Sometimes cardboard's tricky to fold because it's thick. A little glue along the edge. Oh, oh, that would be ridiculous to put it that way, wouldn't it? <laughs> so silly. So I'm going to turn it around, make sure it's pointing towards the tail. Oh, my happy little fish. He's so cute. Now this fish for sure needs some really fun eyes from my treasure bucket here. Ooh, these are kind of cute. Look at these blue eyes. Kind of funny because they're different sizes too. But you know the neat thing is these are on opposite sides of the fish. Oh, look at that. That would be a silly match. They, they're on opposite sides of the fish, so it may not matter if the eyes aren't the same. Hmm, let me think about that. Ooh, look, they're all different sizes. Who knew I had so many sizes of eyeballs? Okay. So let's do that. Let's get some glue and give our sweet, happy fish some eyeballs. And then this fish is going to be ready to get some paint. Okay. So you see how the back of this fish has all the white cardboard showing through? That ends up being fine because when you add the paint onto it, nobody knows any better. Okay. And this fish is ready to paint. Let's make... Mr. Seahorse. We're going to start with our cardboard tube. And again, we're going to flatten this tube a little bit. Okay. Then we're going to trim the neck similar to how we did with the happy baby fish. We'll trim a little triangle off. And then coming out of here is going to be the seahorse's head. Now this is a really great one to use your pencil for because drawing a seahorse's head is not particularly easy the first time around. So I'm gonna start with my Sharpie. I actually come up just a little bit from the neck and then I turn and go flat. See how it's kind of a box corner there? Then we're gonna give him a chin and a nose, okay? If you wanted to go ahead and draw a little mouth, you could. Kind of helps you know what you're doing. I draw a little bit longer nose and then Mr. Seahorse gets eyeballs. Okay, and then sometimes seahorses have some funky business hanging off the back of their head here. 
This is gonna be a fancy seahorse. He does feel a little bit like a dragon. Now, if you wanted to draw eyeballs, you could draw them right now, or you could use your Google eyes in a minute, okay? Now, if your seahorse's head ha has something different happening here, that is totally normal. That's no big deal because seahorses are very different, okay? I wanted mine to be a little fancy. Now, I'm gonna scoot my cardboard down and add some neck, okay? And the head is done. In a minute, I'm gonna cut that out and we'll glue it into the top here. Now, the bottom of Mr. Seahorse, I need to cut just like I did at the top, right? So this one is different than the fish. With the fish, I cut skinny at the tail, but then I cut a happy mouth, okay? On this one, I trim triangles off the top and the bottom because Mr. Seahorse stands tall. Okay, now I do need to add a tail, so I'm gonna scoot his body here where I have some empty space on my cardboard. A seahorse's tail curls, it's a big spiral. So I'm gonna start here at the skinny part of the tail and come down just a little bit. And then Mr. Seahorse's tail is ready to curl around and attach to his body, right? Now I wanna scoot it up just a little bit and add some space to glue, okay? So now on my cardboard, I have his head and I have his tail. Now Mr. Seahorse will have some fins on the side of his body and those fins are triangles. So I can start with kind of a triangle like this. Do you see where my tab is? So I have a space to fold it. Now, if I wanted to, I would save this one and make a pattern using that. Let's do that in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and start cutting our fin. And I'll show you how to turn it into a pattern so you can trace it and glue it onto the other side. Okay, so I have my little fin cut. Let's see, let's find a space on here. Look. It fits perfectly on the cardboard. I might be able to put it up here if I needed to or turn it a little bit sideways. See how it fits in different spots on your cardboard and find a place that you want to put it. Then we're gonna trace it. So we're gonna hold it still and we're gonna draw around the fin so it matches. And Mr. Seahorse has two fins that are the same. You see that? So now I'm ready to finish cutting out all of my pieces. So my seahorse is done, he's cut. I'm gonna start by gluing his head, front and back. And then, let's see, let's squeeze his body together. And hold it again, doing a lot of counting, doing some fun singing. I'm gonna do the same thing with Mr. Seahorse's tail. We're gonna put some glue on the front of his tail, some glue on the back of his tail. And again, we're gonna squeeze that tail together. So Seahorse gets, he's pretty long. Whereas our other fish were horizontal, 
Mr. Seahorse is more vertical. He's up and down. I need to hold his tail so it sticks. You can go play. Now, seahorses' fins go back. So I'm gonna fold them just a little bit. Okay, one side is white, one side's brown. I'm not sure what cardboard you're using, uh, but it should work out okay. Put a little bit of glue on the back here. And hold. Okay, and then I'll turn him over and we'll do the same thing with this fin. Put a little glue on the back. And hold it in place. He's a pretty cool dude. Look at that. Now, I can come along and glue. Uh-oh, did my fin just come off? It did. Things like that happen. You just hold it back in place. Um, you might need a little more glue if yours keep popping off. Sometimes I don't wait long enough. I get impatient. Okay. I'm gonna come along and find an eyeball for our seahorse. I just love that one. It makes me really happy. I'm not sure what eyeballs you're gonna choose, but hey, he's kind of fun. Now, sometimes seahorses have very fancy bodies, okay? And that's one thing that makes seahorses interesting to look at. They have some lines across them and some bumps. Okay. And this is a little bit like their exoskeleton. It helps us think of them like dragons, doesn't it? A seahorse is a lot like a dragon that lives in the ocean. If you wanted to add some lines onto his fins to help him be more interesting, or maybe a little more design up on his head area, that can be really cool. He's ready to paint at this point. Oh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more detail down here on his tail. Help him feel a little bit more like a real seahorse. All right, and now it's time to paint. Now, when you're painting, it's really fun. Sometimes you can paint them, these animals, to be realistic, to look like the real animal in the ocean. I prefer to paint my animals to be more whimsical or more magical. And so I'm working on a seahorse with some blue fins. Okay, maybe I'm going to give him some purple stripes across his belly just to make the dragon part of him or her stand out a little bit more. Now remember this sculpture, because we're making a sculpture, is going to be seen from the front and the back. So you need to paint both sides of your seahorse. You need to paint both sides of your fish. You need to paint both sides of your shark. Sometimes I use a wide paintbrush so I can paint a bigger space. See how that works? And I always have to keep my brush wet when I'm using watercolors. It's really good manners to wash your brush out in between getting a different color. Because then if you're sharing your paint tray with someone else, they don't have to have a dirty color, right? So you can tell that my daughter's still learning how to do that. She's still learning how to wash her paintbrush in between. Okay, my seahorse is coming along. It's got all kinds of fun colors on him. I love the magic of different colors. Now, if you wanna know what a real seahorse looks like, I would look it up on the internet or find a book to look at so you can get the colors to look just like the real seahorse. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, he's got so many fun colors. I can come in and paint in between his, his fins right there. And then oh, I have a whole nother side to work on over here. You have a lot of painting to do today. So I'm going to let you get busy and I'll show you some more tricks over here. Mr. Shark's paint has already dried. So I wanted to show you something that artists call dry brush. And when you take your paintbrush and you get most of the water out, I wipe most of the water. You can see a little bit on my hands, but most of the water is gone. I'm going to choose a color that's a little bit darker, like maybe this purple. And I'm going to roll my brush in the purple. And now I can draw the gill. Are they gills? No, there's a different word. Uh-oh, I've lost my word. You guys are going to have to write me a note and tell me what word I've lost. What are these parts called here on the shark? But that's called dry brush. So again, you get most of the water. Oh, that's a lot of water. I better wipe some more off. Get most of the water off your paintbrush. Get a darker color. Roll your paintbrush. And you can use it to draw on top of your paint that's dry. So the paint on Mr. Shark has already dried and I'm just adding some nice detail lines to make him more exciting to look at, okay? That's a fun idea. It's also awesome on Miss Little Happy Fish here. You could paint stripes. You could paint polka dots. You could even take sequins and glue them to turn this lady into rainbow fish because that would be really fun. How do we do this next step? We've got a stick. I've got three animals and we'll just pretend that I finished painting mine. And I have a hole punch. I want to be able to hang all the animals from the stick. So I'm going to punch a hole in the top of each animal. I'm going to punch it in the fin and I try to kind of keep it close to the center of the animal's body. So there's a hole. Let's see if we can get Mr. Shark punched out here. We're going to use this hole to be where our string goes through. Now, unfortunately, our fancy, awesome seahorse, we have to punch a hole in his fancy head. Poor guy. Then find some yarn. And we're going to start to create some strings to hang our mobile. Okay, a mobile is a piece of art that moves. We call it kinesthetic art. Okay, now I cannot find the end of my yarn. I hope your yarn is in better shape or your string is in better shape than mine. I just had the end of, oh, here it is. A few minutes ago, here it is. I like to make Mr. Shark string the longest, okay? So maybe I'm gonna make it as long as his body. And then I'm gonna cut it, chop, okay? Now I can take and put the string through his fin. I've got a short tail and a long tail on the string. And I'm going to tie a knot. When you tie a knot, you put a crisscross on your string. You go one string, goes over top. And it wraps around, goes under the hole, and ties. If you can't tie a knot, I would go ask a mom, a dad, or a brother, or sister if they can help you figure it out. So Mr. Shark's string was really long. It was as long as his body. Baby Fish's string is going to be as long as her body, right? Because she's going to be higher on our mobile. A mobile is a piece of art that moves. What makes art move? It could be the wind. Maybe it's your blowing with your air. Maybe somebody else walks past it and it twirls around. Oh, look string. So I've got two animals with their string. Now, Mr. Seahorse, it would be ridiculous if I made the string as long as his body because then he would hang super long. So I'm just going to pick a length. It might be the same as the fish. It might be a little shorter as baby fish. We'll just see. Okay. And again, tie a knot at Mr. Seahorse's head. And he's ready to hang on our mobile. I like to put the fish on one side. Let's see, move my stick up. Do you have a stick? If you don't have a stick to hang things from, I would grab a hanger would be a good thing. Um, 
or maybe mom or dad have some good ideas of things you could use to hang your, your mobile from. I'm gonna take Mr. Shark and I'm gonna tie him on the left-hand side. Okay. So he's ready to go. I'm gonna tie my baby fish. Oh, look, she's barely gonna be able to swim, but that's probably a good thing because babies don't need to go too far from their home. All right, oh, I got a really short string. If your string is too short to tie, you might have to cut it off and go again. Whew. All right, and Mr. Seahorse, he gets to come over here. And my mobile is almost ready to hang up and display. I think I need a string to hold my stick. All right, Mr. Seahorse. Yes, look, I can even pick them up and they're starting to spin and twirl. I can move them by touching them. I can blow. I, somebody else could walk by and make them move. So let's get our string that we're gonna tie to the left and the right so we can hang it up in the air. Do you see how I measure my string across my stick? I do it one time and two times. So my string is as long as my stick two times. And I can cut it. I can tie a knot with my string on the left. Boop, got it and tie a knot on the right. And my mobile is ready to hang on a hook in my house. You see my big hook string here. And when I start to pick up my mobile and things start to twirl. Oh, it's fun even just to watch and you can't even see the whole mobile. I can't wait to see pictures of what you all create. This is going to be such an exciting project to share with your family and friends.